In this video, I explain what straw man arguments are and why you should not make them. Straw man arguments are bad logic and bad manners. In logic, an argument is a set of statements or premises that is used to persuade someone to accept the truth of another statement, which is called the conclusion. One good example of a logical argument is the classical syllogism. Here is a particular example. We have the major premise of all men are mortal and the minor premise of Socrates is a man. From that we can conclude that Socrates is mortal. That argument about Socrates is valid, which means that the conclusion has to be true if all of the premises are true. Arguments can be invalid and unsound. An invalid argument is an argument whose conclusion can be false, even if all the premises are true. For example, it's true that all snakes are cold-blooded, and it's true that all frogs are cold-blooded. But from that we can't conclude that all frogs are snakes. This, was, this is an example of an invalid argument. The conclusion is false even though the premises are both true. A sound argument is a valid argument that has true premises. But even a valid argument can be unsound. For example, if we say all birds can fly, well that's a false statement. Penguins are birds, that's a true statement. But if we try to use those two premises to support the conclusion that penguins can fly, we've made a, we have made an unsound argument. It's a valid argument because if all birds could fly and penguins are birds, then penguins would be able to fly. But in reality, penguins can't fly because not all birds can fly. Of course, even an unsound argument can have a true conclusion. The conclusion of an unsound argument could be true or could be false. For example, all fish live in the sea, which is not true because there are some freshwater fish, and all sharks live in the sea is probably also false because a shark can swim up upstream in a river. But if we take those two premises which are false and then we use them in this argument, we can end up with a conclusion that says all sharks are fish. Well, that's it, those two premises, even if they were true, would not support that conclusion. Unfortunately, people who have authoritarian political views often fail to see the problem with arguments like that. If they accept that the conclusion is true, they assume that the reasoning must be good. You can read more about this in Robert Altemeyer's book, The Authoritarians, which is available at this website. An argument that is invalid is not necessarily a bad argument. It just means that it's not ironclad. The probability that the conclusion is true, given that the premises are true, is not 100%. The inductive probability of an argument is the probability that the conclusion is true if all of the premises are true. So a valid argument has an inductive probability of 100%. Any argument whose inductive probability is less than 100% is, by definition, an inductive argument. Strong arguments have a high inductive probability, and weak arguments have a low inductive probability. If an argument is strong and all the premises are true, we describe it as cogent. So this, this idea of inductive arguments not being 100% in terms of inductive probability is important to understand because most of the arguments that we make in science are actually inductive arguments. Logical fallacies are errors in reasoning. A logical fallacy makes an argument invalid, which means that the inductive probability is less than 100%. The logical fallacy may also make the argument weak, which means a low inductive probability. But like an optical illusion, fallacious arguments can lead you to accept a false conclusion. Logical fallacies can be divided into two basic categories, formal and informal. The formal logical fallacies are problems that are related to the structure of the argument. The one on the left, all dogs are mammals, all cats are mammals, and all dogs are cats, is an example of an argument that 
commits the fallacy of the undistributed middle term. And you'll learn all about that if you take an introductory course on logic. To the right is an example of an informal logical fallacy called the argument from ignorance. I cannot prove that leprechauns do not exist. Therefore, leprechauns exist. The fallacies of relevance are fallacies in which the premises do not support the conclusion. They are irrelevant to the conclusion. So the fallacies of relevance are bad arguments that do not really prove what you're trying to prove. However, they can give people psychological or emotional reasons for believing that some statement of fact is true. So for example, there may be an appeal to the emotions such as fear or pity, or there may be an actual attempt to deceive. You can and should make an appeal to the emotions to help people make decisions about what is right or wrong, or about what should be done in a given situation, but not about what is true. Because something can be true whether you're happy about it or not. Red herring fallacies are a particular kind of fallacy of relevance. Red herring fallacies are attempts to deceive. A red herring is a stinky smoked fish that was supposedly used to lay a false trail to distract hunting dogs. A red herring fallacy is a bad argument that distracts attention from important issues. Red herring arguments are bad logic and bad manners. A red herring argument is weak. In other words, there's a high probability that the conclusion is false even if all the premises are true. People who make red herring arguments are trying to distract other people's attention from something that's important. It's like a magic trick. Don't be fooled. A straw man argument is an example of a fallacy of relevance and a red herring fallacy. A straw man argument is an attempt to make your opponent look stupid. So you attack your opponent for saying or believing something that he or she never said and never believed. In other words, you set up a straw man and then knock it down. Straw man arguments are dishonest. A straw man argument is based on a lie. You claim that the other person has said or believed some bad or foolish thing that he has never said or believed. Then you call the person a fool for saying or believing that thing. I think that you should never make straw man arguments. I think they are dishonest and they are immoral. If your cause is just, truth will serve it. If you make straw man arguments, you make yourself look foolish and a bit skeevy. If you make straw man arguments on my blog, I will delete them. There are ways to learn how to make good arguments. The classical liberal arts curriculum was developed for the purpose of teaching people how to make good arguments and how to avoid being misled by bad arguments. It consisted of seven basic subjects. The verbal arts portion of the classical liberal arts curriculum was called the trivium. It consisted of grammar, which is the study of how words are altered and combined to form meaningful sentences, logic, which is the study of how sentences are combined to form arguments, and rhetoric, which is the art of persuasion. The quadrivium was the quantitative portion of the classical liberal arts curriculum. It consisted of mathematics, which is the art of number, geometry, which is the art of number and space, music, which is the art of number and time, and astronomy, which is the art of number, space, and time. The studies of logic and rhetoric teach you that straw man arguments are illogical and unpersuasive. I explain more about logic and grammar and the rest of the liberal arts in my book Not Trivial, How Studying the Traditional Liberal Arts Can Set You Free. The liberal arts were called the liberal arts because the word liberal meant pertaining to freeborn men as opposed to slaves. The liberal arts were the studies that prepared a young man for a career in the Senate, as opposed to teaching somebody to just do as he was told.
by studying the traditional liberal arts, you free your mind.